Uh, joining us now, Montana Congressman Ryan Zinke. He spent a lot of time in the Middle East uh, during his time on SEAL Team 6. Congressman, it's good to see you. I appreciate it. I think if tonight proves one thing, uh, that there is no deterrence uh, in the Middle East. You could have said that after October 7th, uh, that deterrence was lost by the attacks of October 7th. But certainly if Iran feels emboldened enough to do this, uh, deterrence has not been restored. President Biden warned them yesterday. He said, don't do it when asked, uh, and Iran went ahead and did it again. What does Israel need to do to come somewhere between restoring deterrence, which needs to be done, and not start a regional war with tens of thousands of American troops to be drawn into it? Well, you, you bring up a great point, and by the way, great coverage uh, of, of this situation. But, you know, deterrence is only deterrence if it, in fact, does that. When there's no consequence for bad behavior, then it's really not a deterrence. And peace through strength is peace through strength. Cosworth once, once said about war really is policy by other means. And what we're seeing is a manifestation of, I, I think, a weak Biden policy. You know, when he said, hey, don't do it, did, did they, they take heed? No. Uh, you know, obviously, Afghanistan, Ukraine, and Israel, our allies don't trust us. I think it was encouraging to see that, that our allies in the region allowed uh, airspace and helped with the defense of Israel through, through missiles. But they had little choice because, because they also know that Iran would target them just as well. So I think what's the big thing that, to see is that it's shifted from a, a war of surrogates, Hamas, Hezbollah, uh, and the Houthis, to now a direct conflict between Iran and Israel. And what is the deterrence? Only if the United States stands strong and defends Israel. That's the big gun in the region. Yeah, no, and I, you mentioned the word peace, which I always think is uh, elusive in the Middle East. Um, I spent a few years there as a foreign correspondent, and. People would say, well, can there be peace? And it's very difficult to have peace with people who have a sort of sworn ideology to destroy you, which is what Iran does towards uh, Israel. You look at well, the map, exactly U.S. Right forces, in yeah, US uh, forces in the Middle East, and I think about the Americans in harm's way here. Uh, where are we in that, in that the, the chance, and I think about, uh, the folks who wear the uniform that you used to wear. Uh, if you've got a soldier, sailor, airman, marine uh, stationed in the Middle East tonight uh, as, a, as a parent or as a sibling or as a spouse, you ain't sleeping. Well, we certainly, as an aggregate, we have a lot of forces. They're not configured uh, to fight Iran primarily. They're, they're configured to, you know, look, address where they are, you know, geographically. A lot of difference between Mali and, and say, you know, Somalia and, and, and the Red Sea. But your point is well taken. We are exposed, uh, there's no doubt. But we're exposed because the lack of true deterrence. Deterrence is only, again, deterrence if you're willing uh, to use it. And, and it comes back to, thus far, Iran has given, you know, aid to, to the Houthis. What have they done? They've launched missiles in the Red Sea. Iran has given aid yep. to Hamas. Iran has given aid to Hamas, to Hezbollah. What's well, so, our, so fair enough. Let me, let me ask you this. Almost nothing. Look, reasonable people can agree the Biden administration's policy uh, has been a failure. Um, and we don't want to make tonight political. But So I'll look forward rather than backwards. Um, Israel faces a choice right now. Um, you know, it's about 5.30 in the morning there. We understand the war cabinet um, has authorized the prime minister and the defense minister to sort of unilaterally decide how to respond, at least in the very short term, um, to this. And the Israelis knew it was coming. They have their planes fueled and ready to go. Um, they've got tankers up. So if they want to have a long, you know, launch a massive long-range raid against Israel, against Iran, the Israelis can. Uh, what, how much of a hunting license, forgive the, the term, but what hunting license should the Biden administration give Israel, or should they give them no bag limit and say, go do whatever you want? I think they need to give Israel a lot of latitude. But you have to look back before you can look forward to how did we get here? We got here through weakness. Uh, when the president of the United States says, hey, don't, don't do it, and they do it anyway, that's not much of a deterrence. So I, I think Israel has carte blanche 
uh, could probably go against the nuclear facilities and damage the Iranian economy. We also do need to do our part, which was sanctions should stick. But when we willingly and knowingly allow Iran to violate tens of billions of dollars of, of sanctions, you know, where does that money go? They, their own State Department says, I, we know exactly where it goes. It, it, it goes to do harm against ourselves and our allies. Right. And also, also we have to remember how we got here. We got here because uh, the Israel likely attacked and killed two generals, one of which was on the sanctions list uh, with Hezbollah. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.